Welcome to Just Two Wheels. This week we go to the Australian Supermoto Championships, hang out with Sophie Lovett, one of Australia's fastest female road racers, talk to Darren from Race Centre in Victoria, talk to Cam Donald, Isle of Man TT legend, take a motocross masterclass, and Cameron McFarlane comes and gives us some MX race tips. Just Two Wheels loves to see fast women on the racetrack, and one of the fastest girls we have in Australia is heartthrob Sophie Lovett. She follows in her father's footsteps by riding green, and she encourages as many women to come racing as possible, if they can keep up. Right, Sophie Love it. thanks for joining me on Just Two Wheels. Now you started riding super motards, which isn't something a lot of girls get into at your age. So your dad dragged you into it, but tell us all about your passion now. Um, well, I used to go along with dad when he was uh, racing super motards, so I was putting the fuel in his bike and putting the tyre warmers on. Yep. Uh, so there was a little pink girl and <laughs> I was about 16 at the time. And then I saw another lady out there and she was pretty much the only one there and she was having so much fun. So I thought, oh, I'll give it a go and had never ridden a bike up until then. Um, even with dad's background with motorbikes and I was always into horses. So um, it was okay. quite a change. <laughs> say when you said, I want to go too? Um, well, it's actually my granddad. Uh, he was always a speed ra speedway racer, uh, New South Wales champion back in the day. Uh, so he would come out when mum and dad weren't home and he would take me down on the KDM 555 and teach me how to ride. Oh, yeah. and, and he was teaching me how to fall off because he, in his uh, era that was the way that you learn how to ride and so you were falling off and were comfortable with pushing yourself. Um, and then I was telling dad that I really wanted to go racing so got into a bit of uh, motocross just to practice the dirt side of things for the super motor uh, and went from there. So tell us a little bit about the ZX10 and what you're racing in the ASBK this weekend. Uh, well, this here is Julio. Uh, Sorry? Julio. Julio, okay. ZX10. Has he got long hair? Uh, not this weekend. Not this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> He's very kind. Uh, it's such a great bike to ride and especially around here. It's so fast and the brakes are wonderful. Um, going through the turns, it's always very stable so you feel really comfortable on it. All the games that you play. So your dad and you've got a mechanic here helping with that setup? Yes, uh, Al Samuels, he's certainly been very busy this weekend. Yeah. So dad's racing in the Pro Stock and the Super Bike and I'm racing in the Pro Stock and the 250 class. Uh, so jumping on both bikes, having to have them ready because they're one after each other in racing, uh, certainly keeping Al very busy. Kawasaki have come on, on board to help you out a bit more this year and you become a bit more of a, a media title here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's very new to me. Um, I come racing because I love it and I'd like to encourage more women to come racing because it is such a great sport and it has such a good weekend every single time we're here. Um, so they've come on board and they're giving me some support, which is great. So hopefully with their uh, well, a little bit more promotion on their side and my side for them, uh, hopefully that we can more girls to come along. Stephen Gall, Chris Urquhart and Shane Booth 
had ideas of raising the level of motocross coaching in Australia by getting one of our biggest exports, number 26, Michael Byrne, to create the MX Masterclass. When Just Two Wheels heard Byrne would be at Coolin for coaching, we rang up Erky to line up a day's filming. Would you act if the thing that you love left, would you let it go? Mate, Chris Urquhart, the uh, MX Masterclass seems to be a bit of a master stroke. Yeah, we um, we sort of come up with this idea a couple of years ago, spoke to Berner about it, and took a little while to put things into place with his season and, and what we had going on as well. But we, uh, we pulled the trigger this year, booked a couple of dates, uh, literally gave Berner the credit card and said, book your flights, and uh, here we are. To a fan or the passion you happen to have still, you ain't given up yet. As you go faster, okay, you see something further ahead. The right now, I give everything I have straight back for another day, cover and page up in the left. Yeah, we've, got a, we've got a great turnout, we've got 50 riders, and we, we capped it at that to try and keep it keep it a, a limited group we we sort of unfortunately had to turn a bunch of people away but we did happen last weekend which uh, had had a sellout again but everyone's everyone's listening up really well and working well on the track which is a good thing what you gonna do when tomorrow come one of those days it is evident everything is on the line to my best yet i'm always up against the time it's here man ready for the take Anna. it's clear man never gonna wait Anna. you either make it or ain't it's not just Berner and yourself, you've also got Shane Booth and the one and only Stephen Gall, mate. This is a hell of a class and a hell of a set of teachers you've got here. Yeah, we, thanks. We, um, yeah, part of the whole idea, Gawley trained Berner, Boothie and myself, so we right. thought we'd bring the, bring the whole team back together. And, uh, and yeah, you know, it was, like I said, it was a bit of an idea and we, we put it together and, and we got, um, yeah, got it all together and, and thought we'd sort of no expense spared with trying to make it the best we can for everyone and, and want everyone to, to leave with a bit of a buzz. Everyone gets a burner front number plate when they leave, which you'll sign, and uh, pretty much uh, hope, hopefully they walk away loving it. Over the couple of days of the course, we, we work on standing position, which might sound like a basic thing, but even a good point Berner made at Appen to the group straight up, you know, there's no secret, him and James Stewart and Ricky Carmichael, them guys at the top, there's no secrets to what they're doing, it's doing all the, the little things right. So we structured it around around the basics and then branched off from there, made each basic sort of thing that we work on more technical for each rider and, and to suit the track conditions as well so the whole school or the whole course is basically structured like building blocks and it, it sort of sort of works its way up as the course goes on mate thanks for having me along i'm just going to sit in the background and see if i can pick up some pointers myself no worries, mate. Thanks for coming along, and uh, yeah, hopefully all the all the viewers uh, enjoy what they see. Mate, I reckon, um, you know, keep this going. Could have a, a hell of a lot more masterclass riders out there. It'd be great to see. I, th I think so. Now we've now we've kicked it off. It's uh, hopefully going to be a yearly thing. Awesome, mate. Thanks. Thanks. Mate, this weekend, or you know, you're back in Australia for the the Gaul um, Master MX Masterclass. Yeah. Um, how'd you get involved in this? Ah, uh, well, you know, Shane and, and Chris and Stephen, you know, we all grew up, you know, or well, Shane and Eric and I grew up riding together. So, um, you know, Stephen was always our our mentor, and uh, you know, I don't have any deals at the moment going on over there. So, um, being a free agent, I was able to just come and. It doesn't matter what I, you know, I could come and ride with these guys and ride a Yamaha and, and not get in trouble for it. And yeah. so it was just a good fit at the time. And, you know, obviously Dean Ferris was supposed to do this, but now he's got his shot in America. So, you know, congrats to him. So he has to focus on that. And, uh, you know, it, it just seemed to, it just seemed to fit. And I thought it would be, be a fun experience to come back and, uh, you know, try and try and give the kids back something. Masterclass is something we've talked about for a couple of years. It's something we've really wanted to do, and um, 
it just hasn't been able to come together schedule wise and uh, this year Bernard just had a bit of an open schedule and and we sort of jumped on it threw it together not last minute but only with a couple of months up our sleeve and we thought no it's too good opportunity Bernard's free let's let's have a crack at it and it's you know we've had a great response and it's worked really well Undoubtedly one of the most dynamic forms of motorcycle racing is Super Motard. In past years there were huge fields and massive support, but in recent years the numbers have dwindled. Well times are changing. This year's Super Motard Championships were held in North Queensland with well over 100 entries. All right, Troy Bayless, mate, fantastic to see you at the Australian Super Motard Championships. How much um, Super Motard have you done in the past? Uh, never a proper <laughs> Super Motard race. Yep. Um, back in when I was overseas, I, every December we used to race these sort of bikes in a car park at Bologna Motor Show, but with no dirt. Yep. So, yeah, it's nice to come up and have a go. I used to do some motocross when I was a junior, so I have done jumps before. <laughs> mate, you've just come off the, off the back of winning a couple of Australian dirt track titles. Yep. Reckon you can bring any of that luck into this weekend? Uh, well, I'm going okay, especially on the 250. Um, sort of struggling with some slicks, been having a heap of chatter on the big girl. Uh, but then this morning with a bit of rain, I was, I was feeling real comfortable. So I'd like a little bit more rain, but you know, the guys are riding really well and Angus is like, you know, he's yeah. so talented and going well. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see how the day turns out. I've got a new appliance, you want to check it out. The common many colours, but I for any other reason. Angus, um, seven times Australian Super Motard Championship. There's some stiff competition here for this year. Yeah, there is. We've got uh, Troy Bayless here, Aussie legend. Um, we've got a couple of Northern Queensland dirt track guys that are quite fast and uh, New South Wales Super Moto Riders clubs here too. So a few of us has, have made the long trek up. Um, it's been really good so far. It's, uh, it's raining now. We just went out for qualifying then. Uh, we had a really good run then. The bike was working really, really well, nice and stable really grippy so and I'm happy with how things are going so far hopefully just keep it on two wheels and uh, you know hopefully bring that number one plate back to New South Wales well, we don't want that to happen we'll yeah, no, we want that to happen I came a little stuck I could help you if you like I've got a few tricks you know it's alright it's all all right, Mitch, um, have you done much Super Motards before? First year. First year, another first year. How are you finding it? Um, pretty hard. Yeah, where have you done most of your riding before? In the bush. In the bush. So, um, can you bring anything from the bush to the track? Mm, sort of. Sort of. So, um, what do you think of the track and, and how you been going this weekend? It's pretty good, the track, and yeah. I'm doing great. It's alright. It's alright. The one you like I found it in my bag After filing it late to work Alright Andy McLeish, reigning S2 champion you got some stiff competition this week But you have a uh, home track How do you reckon you're going to go? Yeah, I've got the home track advantage this weekend But it's not saying much There's a new dirt section So it's tossed it around And I had half a day practice Or two weeks ago but before that, I haven't ridden for seven weeks because of broken bones. Something else that you forgot, but I don't mind if you want to put it off the later and the better. Not that we meant. Well, my first time on Super Motard was yesterday, doing a bit of practice before the Australian title today. How do you find it? It's pretty good. I got. Um, I picked up my time a bit yesterday and it started raining today so i got to get used to like, a whole new thing again but now nah, it's pretty good. Enjoying I like it. it. Yeah. Mate, you've just come off an outstanding effort at the Fink Desert Race. Do you want to tell the fans what you, uh, what you achieved? Um, yeah, I went into Fink hoping for a top 100 and I came away with 59th outright which is pretty awesome, beating like 300 and something guys. <laughs> on a 250? Stoked. Yeah, on my 250, <laughs> yeah. a bit of bad luck last year and you end up commentating. Yeah mate, yeah, I've had um last two years out due to injury and first year back, um, 
well, uh, on pole at the big bike and then um, fastest in practice on the 450. Then the rain came down and I uh, haven't ridden the rain before, so I'm back on the second row of the grid. Mate, you've got some stiff competition here this year. Yeah, I know, but I reckon I can run it. I just, uh, I just hope the rain goes away because I don't like the rain. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Race Centre is a Victorian company set up to help aspiring road racers deal with the technicalities of going road racing. From rider coaching to setup, Darren has the experience and the knowledge. Um, tell us what Race Centre is all about. Um, Race Centre is a new business that we've formed um, in Brunswick in uh, Melbourne CBD. Uh, it's about bringing race technology, our years of racing experience, to the, um, to the novice riders, to every level of rider, pro riders, um, and just bringing our industry knowledge, you know. We've felt that there's been a bit of a gap in the market. There's a lot of good stuff out there, but it, particularly road racing is difficult for people to get into, um, and we want to provide all our years of experience, all the mistakes we've made. We've made some big mistakes in the yeah. past, so um, we've um, wanted to provide that. Our um, specialty uh, bike setup and suspension, um, but we do engine builds. We've got a motorcycle dyno. Um, we've invested a lot of money um, and effort into building our product. We do our own suspension valving. Um, we're looking at, um, in 2015, starting to bring out some prototype of our own suspension components. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's about bringing all those experience to a lot of riders and so that when they start out, they don't have to go through all the mistakes that we made, you know, so that's the main thing. So you were telling me before, you, you help you know, Jed Nesh, a top level rider, but you're down here today helping a bloke that's never raced before to get him around the track a bit safer and better and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely, and you know, it's, it's pretty amazing that you know, get to work with the likes of Jed Metcher, um, uh, you know, and, you know, like we've got to work together and win an Australian Superbike race this year. Um, and the same t um, suspension technology we've developed through his racing, we give straight to our customers with the BMW that we see behind us today. And what that's a bit about is that, you know, I've come down, we've, we've done suspension setup for the particular customer and we've sort, and I've come down to make sure that it all goes okay, speak to him. Um, we do rider coaching as well. So what we do is we say, right, here's a bike that we know will work. Um, you know, this is the sort of lines you need to take, it's how you need to ride it, then they've got a bit of a plan. So they go out on the track, they come back and say the bike does this, doesn't do that, or they come back and say the bike's amazing, I just need to ride it faster. And we're there is a lot of it's coaching, help with bikes, but a lot of it's support and to say, hey, there's somebody here that has got a lot of experience, we've got a, we've got a, we're building credibility, we've got a lot of riders on our gear now that are going better, um, and it's, you know, if someone is starting, and doing, just doing some track days and wants to get into racing, it's just a way to say, hey, you know, someone's here to help you. you know? I guess it's better money spent than going out and spending your money on all the tech parts, but not really knowing how to use them. Exactly, and so what we've done is, you know, the guys bring their bikes to us in terms of setup, and then the trackside support's just part of the deal. Like, we don't offer where we do suspension or bike setup and say, okay, now you go on your own, the trackside's something else. It's like, if you want us to do suspension, the trackside support comes with it, because we know that, we're, you know, we're focused on, getting results whether that's winning Australian Superbike race or whether that's somebody coming to track day and loving their bike and having a great time feeling like it's fun and enjoying it packing their bike up and going home and we yeah. know the best way to do that is to be here for them after we've done the job so that's just you know we thought we'd do something a bit different like that. It's not every day you have the chance of talking to an Isle of Man TT legend well Australian Cam Donald is just that after winning the Superbike and the Super Stock TT in 2008 one of the nicest guys you can meet, Cam talks about his new Isle of Man project, the Norton SG3. Cam Donald, I interviewed you at the Troy Ballas Classic and you promised me that you weren't going to be doing the Isle of Man this year. Now I saw involved in a very exciting project, can you tell us what that was about? Yeah, well we um, had the opportunity to come on board with Norton and develop their new superbike and to be honest it was, it was too much of an exciting project to turn down. You know, I've got a long history now of Norton's in my family and racing classic bikes and to be involved in a new project with that brand, I couldn't turn it down. It, it's, it looks like a, a few years going to be developed, that bike. So you're obviously on board for a couple more years. Yeah, it was a three-year plan. To be honest, we tested the bike and did a lot better prior to the TT. We had high hopes. Yep. Of course, you always find your weakest link around the TT course, but total new chassis uh, and a very different engine set up for next year. And we'll go back and hopefully be a lot closer to the front because uh, the boys at Norton are very competitive like I am and we don't want to be running around, you know, outside yeah. the top ten, that's for sure. 
Mate, uh, everyone was talking about the noise of that thing. I wasn't there, but, you know, tell me about riding that sort of a bike. Yeah, you know, it's a monster, and, uh, yeah, it makes a hell of a racket, but it, it's a lot of fun to ride. So we tested it at uh, three of the top circuits in Britain, and at times are quite fast, but the TT's so much faster and puts so much more stress on the chassis. Um, it, you know, it showed some weak points there. We DNF both races with minor mechanical issues, a fuel pump and a tyre spinning on the rim actually, causing a, a vibration. So they weren't big issues, but you only get one bite at the TT each year. So we've got to wait 12 months to go back. And safety is a big point of the TT. It is, and with a prototype bike, you know, there's a lot of new parts, untested equipment, but said new chassis being finalised now. I'm going to head back over there in the off season to test. And uh, we're going to go back in, uh, hopefully with a, a lot more momentum and a better package for 2015. Not long ago, the motorcycle industry lost a legend in Barry Cockle. He was a great person, a good friend of many, a father and a husband. This is Just Two Wheels' obituary to Barry Cockle. So Barry Cockle, mate, you've uh, been riding bikes for how many years now? Uh, it'll be about 36, or maybe even 40. 40 yep. Years, yep. So you did most of your riding motocross and supercross? All of it, of yeah, in my younger days, all of it. I gave up at 19, yep. work commitments, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, it was basically um, full time for since the age of about four or five. So um, the Troy Bayless Classic has um, spurred a bit of life back into the passion? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Between that, mate, uh, Luke Trail, that sort of thing, getting us um, getting us all back with wheels. And um, I actually bought the bike so my four-year-old and I could ride. Yeah. And um, now she's got a lot of work done to it. And uh, it's no good for riding with a four-year-old anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everyone sort of seems to think that this is a big fun day, but um, most of the guys are taking it pretty seriously, aren't they? Nothing fun about coming second. Nothing <laughs> fun about coming second. They kid themselves. Yeah. All you keep in hearing is I haven't ridden since last year and uh, my bike standard. Everyone's trying to find two, excuses. Two biggest lies I've heard. <laughs> no way. No way. Awesome, mate. Thank yeah. you. Cool. Hi, I'm Cameron McFarlane from Seven Motorsports, and this week's MX tip is corner entry. Corner entry is all about preparation. If we can come, if we know where we need to be on the racetrack, understand the lines, and understand the right techniques, then we're going to have smoother and more consistent lines in every corner. Corner speed is about preparation. Getting the bike into the corner smooth and fast. Lean the bike over. Prepare yourself early get down the gearbox and get to the apex, which is the standing to sitting position, smooth and fast. Once we've got that preparation right, it makes the corner flow easier. And as I said, most motocross tracks have got 15 to 16 corners per lap. So if we can get that preparation done, flow, make it smooth and make it consistent, then the whole lap is gonna to come together very easily. The preparation, and leaning the bike over, getting down to the gearbox, getting into that seating position, and roll the throttle through the corner makes life easier. I'm Cameron McFarlane from Seven Motorsports, and that's your MX tip for this week. Well, that's the end of the show, and thanks for watching. If you need any more action, head over to the website, Just Two Wheels. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, and until then, stay tuned for another massive episode next week. Next week, we go to the Hatar Desert Race. 
have a chat with Jesse Dobson, one of Australia's upcoming MX stars. Lukey Luke does some skids in Proserpine. We talk to Australia's smallest, fastest road racer, Joe Kelso. We go to the Australian Supercross Series, hang out with a few legends at a dirt track meeting, and Steve Brogy provides us with some road racing tips. Man, why do you 